Hey guys, welcome to my channel. I hope you're all doing very well. So I just watched The Five Bloods. Let's talk about it. The Five Bloods is directed by Spike Lee, who is one of the most recognisable visionary directors of our time. He also directed Black Klansman, one of my favourite films, honestly, of this decade. I loved that film. I think it was so powerful. And here we have another powerful entry from him. This film is centred around a group of Vietnam War veterans who are headed back to Vietnam in order to retrieve the remains of their once commander, played by Chadwick Boseman, as well as a small fortune in gold bars, which they'd managed to stumble across decades ago during the war. So that's pretty much all that I'm going to be discussing when it comes to the actual plot of this film. This is going to be a non-spoiler review. For once, <laughs> I often go into spoilers in my reviews, but I want to keep this as obscure as possible so that you can dive into the specifics of the film when you watch it, because overall I would highly, highly recommend that you check this one out, especially considering that it is available now on Netflix. And secondly, before we get into the review itself, I just wanted to give you a gentle reminder to to subscribe to my channel so you can catch new uploads and make sure that you turn on those notifications because apparently they're necessary for YouTube. I don't make the rules. <laughs> so first things first, let's dive into some of the things that I really enjoyed about this film. And like I said, I'm not going to be going into specifics in terms of the plot. But what I will say is that this is just yet another example of films that are focused on the black experience that we have seen in the last decade that provides such a diversity in storytelling. This story is centered around Vietnam War veterans that were black. When? <laughs> when? Have you ever seen that? When? Where? How? You have never seen anything like this. In fact, in my mind, and it's preposterous, but in my mind, when I imagine a Vietnam War era veteran, I just think of a white guy. Because of course we do, because that's how history has been written for so long. Even when you go back to World War II, you just think of white soldiers. And yes, they were predominantly white, but let's not erase the fights. Let's not erase the struggles of black soldiers that also went into war to fight on behalf of their country. And that's what this film is helping to do. It's helping to highlight the story of these black soldiers that were also there fighting on behalf of the United States in this pointless <laughs> of pointless wars in history and like i said in my best movies of the decade video i love the fact that we're starting to get a diversification of the representation of black stories in cinema this is something that i hope to see more of in the coming decade but it's something that's definitely taken foot in the last one and i fully appreciate the fact that filmmakers like spike lee are using that platform in order to spread awareness and highlight the stories that were obscured and forgotten throughout history surrounding these important black figures especially you have the case of black Klansmen, where you have the man that infiltrated the kkk and now in this case we have the representation of black vietnam war veterans now what i particularly like about this film is not just the fact that it highlights their existence and it highlights their plight as well and the way that they were treated in the army they weren't treated as equals as we also saw in world war ii where a lot of the veterans said that when they came to europe they were treated like kings they were treated like heroes because they came to save the day in America's version of World War II which we won't get into in this video but when they ended up going back home it was back to them being aggressed it was back to them being lynched it was back to them being referred to as the n-word and treated as subhuman so you have that narrative that's played out throughout generations since World War II maybe even World War One, where you have these black war heroes that come back to America come back home to find that they have no civil rights where they're treated as less than human and as a result they feel like the war is never really over and just in general when you're dealing with veterans and you're dealing with people who have PTSD from war what conflicts right life-threatening situations already they feel like there is an internal war within them because of the mental impact that all of that has and it plays a toll on their mental health but then you add the fact that as a black man or a black woman nowadays as they can enter the army you're not even treated as a human being to begin with. As this film emphasizes, it's this constant state of being at war. You're at war when you're abroad and then you come back home, you're facing your own demons and your own battles inside of your head. And then you're also facing this battle in your own community, in your own territory, because your fellow Americans don't even view you as human and equal. And just as a side note, if you wanna check out another film that explores this theme brilliantly, in my opinion, I would highly recommend that you check out another Netflix film called Mudbound, which came out in 2017. 
team and Mary J Blige was nominated for an Oscar for that film but it is brilliant I highly recommend it in that case it deals with a black World War II veteran who comes back from Europe but it's that similar theme of him being oppressed in his own backyard being made to feel less than human even though he risked his life he risked everything to go abroad and fight on behalf of his country and he was made promises that this country never kept and that's the same thing when it comes to these Vietnam veterans over here that's something that is explored throughout this film is the idea that they were promised so many things when they headed out to war and then when they returned they found things pretty much the same except even worse because you also have the assassination of Martin Luther King Jr. And speaking of the great Martin Luther King another thing that Spike Lee often does in his films and TV shows as I saw in She's Gotta Have It is that he interweaves in some historical facts in order to give wider context to everything that's going on on screen. So even though we have this fictional story playing out we also get these tidbits of actual history. It's like a nice little history lesson throughout his films which provides us with a greater context for what was happening in this time and in particular with the civil rights movement and the protests against the Vietnam War as well as the horrors, the horrors of the Vietnam War itself. And that's another thing that I really liked about this film as well is that Spike Lee presents a very nuanced version of this story. He doesn't just stick to one side. He doesn't try to present the Vietnam War as this heroic battle that black people took part in. He shows it warts and all and oh boy were there a lot of warts. This was one of the most controversial wars of the 20th century and that's saying something considering there are two world war listen <laughs> and here Spike Lee refuses to flinch or shy away from the horrors of this war and shy away from the atrocities that were committed by the American troops to the Vietnamese people. And another way that this film presents nuance is in the depiction of the five bloods themselves. You have the remaining four here that are presented as these very different types of black male characters. They present a different subgroup within the black community in America. In particular when you have the cases of Eddie and Paul and in the case of Eddie at first at least, <laughs> not to spoil anything, Thing, but he represents a middle class to upper class black American. He has disposable income. He's the one that's funding this entire trip. And then you have a very proud and very conservative and a Trump supporting Paul so problematic <laughs> but Paul is faced with so many demons when it comes to what happened during this war those demons have followed him throughout his entire life and has affected everything from his relationship with his son to his mental health to his physical health as well as we find out later on in the film this is such a complex character because you understand what his pain is you understand that this war never really left him it surrounded him it engulfed him and it prevented him from living out the life that he deserved after fighting on behalf of his country but at the same time he's also kind of the worst <laughs> he touts this MAGA hat throughout the film and it's just and it feels very purposeful to have that character there because of course his political views may be grating <laughs> he's openly racist he's openly uh, discriminative towards the Vietnamese people there he still sees them kind of as the enemy and that's kind of hard to let go of after the war and also so pretty early on it's revealed that he is rather xenophobic and there's this idea of him not being pro-immigration because he believes that immigrants are taking away jobs <laughs> he's a chop supporter <laughs> it's tough to watch but ultimately you do see more layers of this character being peeled away as the story goes on making him more than just the physical personal manifestation of the MAGA hat itself now I also wanted to touch on some of the more technical and structural aspects of this film because like I said at the beginning of this review I really view Spike Lee as a visionary director when you see one of his films you know that they're his they have Spike Lee isms within there someone who's really able to realize their vision in the most artistic and distinct way and I highly appreciate that about this director. One of the creative decisions that he makes when it comes to this film is having several flashbacks that go back to the time of the Vietnam War and depicting the conflict, depicting the battles and the, the bloodiness of it, the horror of it and it really is striking but he doesn't just go back in time to show those conflicts as you would usually see them. He has a few creative choices in there that make it again distinctly Spike Lee. So first off in 
those flashbacks itself, you have the older actors portraying themselves. Where you would usually expect the storyteller to have the younger versions of these characters who we meet at an older age, instead we have the very same actors who are in their older age portraying their younger selves. And as a result, you have more of an understanding of the roles that they played during that time. You get to know the characters both in the present and in the past. And also just on a practical level, it helps because you don't have to learn who everyone is in the flashbacks. You already know who everyone is from their present form. And secondly, another creative decision that Spike Lee makes is by changing the aspect ratios as well as the color story of the scenes that were taking place in the flashbacks. And they just help to depict a very 1960s, 70s Vietnam War era aesthetic, as well as very clearly defining the events of today versus the events of the war back then. But then you also have the presence of Chadwick Boseman who plays their former commander. And in the flashback scenes, we see how much of an impact his leadership had on each of these men. And we see that in the present scenes as well, that that impact never left them. But in particular in the flashbacks, it's really striking to see these older men taking the leadership of this younger man because of course he never got a chance to become older. He never got a chance to age because he ended up dying during the war. And we see the circumstances that he dies by, but they're very tragic and it fully sets in why these men had such admiration for this leader. His leadership really did strike a chord with them and his principles and ideology was something that they lived their lives by afterwards. And that at its core is what I believe this film is really about. It's about this bond. It's about the connection that the five bloods had during this war. And despite the fact that they're clearly different people belonging to different subgroups within the black community in America, when they come together in Vietnam in order to get the remains of their commander, you see that they're still connected by this bond even after all of these years and all of the life experiences that they've had since then. It's something that they take very seriously and it's deeply rooted within them because it comes from a place of trauma. It comes from a place of survival. Even when your fellow Americans were against you and using you as cannon fodder, they had to stick together. They had to have each other's backs and that's something that has stuck with them throughout the decades. But overall, I very much enjoyed this film, especially when it came to the historical aspects of it, of exploring the experiences of black Vietnam War veterans and how they were treated abroad. And then of course, how they were treated when they came back home. And of course, you have the aspect of the civil rights movement and the Black Lives Matter movement. Oh boy, <laughs> the timing of this film could not could not be more perfect. <laughs> I mean, unfortunately, no matter what time this film would have been released, it would have been very relevant because issues of police brutality don't just disappear. <laughs> issues of civil rights in America and indeed across the world don't just disappear. They're always, always a factor. It's just a case of whether or not they make headlines and whether or not they're trending on Twitter. But the fact that this film came out this weekend in light of everything that's happening across the globe right now with the Black Lives Matter movement, it's pretty on the pulse. It's pretty scary how amazingly timed this film's release is. If I did have a criticism of this film, it would be that the first half I think is inferior to the second. At the beginning, there's this general feeling of that Morgan Freeman film, a going out in style, I believe it's called, where you have the like old bank robbers. But in this case, it's like the old veterans and they're going to Vietnam and it feels like it's like their last shebang where they're gonna have fun and they're gonna party. Overall, the feeling of the film in the first half is very misleading to what we end up with and I much prefer the second half. That's where we get down to the nitty gritty. We get down to the, the thoughts and the feelings of each of these characters. We get to understanding most of them, not all of them, which we'll get into a second, a little bit better. But in the first half, it felt like they were just out on their last hurrah. And it, it didn't feel very genuine. It didn't feel very insightful. And it, it felt a bit shaky in that sense. But we definitely got to the, the good stuff, the nitty gritty in the second half. And also, like I just said, some of the characters are served with much more character development with much more of an interesting backstory than some of the others and considering there's only like four main characters really the four veterans along with one of the veterans sons the fact that we only have five characters is a bit disappointing to see that we can only really delve into about two maybe three of them and I think for the most part it's because Spike Lee didn't really want to put too much emphasis on the characters themselves but rather on who they represented which is this whole group of people people, of heroes, of veterans who went forgotten throughout time and in the meantime heroicism and acts of bravery are constantly being depicted within the white community in America and indeed again in the world.
Whereas the achievements and sacrifices of black men and women are often overlooked and forgotten, all in the name of perpetuating white supremacy. We love to see it. So overall, I very much enjoyed this film. I liked the fact that it tied in the fictional aspects of this specific story to the very real historical context. And then you have that added element of the fact that it is so culturally relevant for today, for specifically today, that it is entirely uncanny. And as a result, I'm going to be giving The Five Bloods a 7.5 out of 10. So that's it from me. Now that I told you guys my thoughts on The Five Bloods, it's time for you guys to let me know what you thought of this film down in the comments below. Please be sure to subscribe to catch new videos coming up. Thank you guys so, so much for watching. I really, really appreciate it. And I will see you in the next one. Bye.